You're listening to a DM podcast. You're listening to Errol Parker and Clancy Overall, editors of the Batuta Advocate on Desert Rock FM. Welcome back to the Batuta Advocate podcast. You've got Clancy and Errol in here today. Interviewing two interesting blokes, one who has been on before in many different capacities, mm. uh, formerly known as an alt electro troubadour, um, followed by a Movember dad podcaster. That's right. Yeah. Raf Dixon, thank you for joining us. Former Greens candidate for the Inner West as yep. well. Yeah, he was coming for Albo. No, uh, I went further left. You know. <laughs> oh, yes, right. Yeah. The, the no uh, flight path party. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no second runway yeah. party. Bullet, train, <laughs> bullet train for Australia? Was that your thing? <laughs> no aircraft noise. That was me. It's too bloody loud. <laughs> it's too loud. It is too loud. You're a bit Surely decentralisation is the answer. Like, we don't need medium density in this swathing vast inner west suburb. No, there's a group <laughs> of proper lefties which are tasked with the conservation of the Cooks Rivers. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're called the crab like people. The mud crabs. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think we should arm the mud crabs. Oh, well, I've always said this that like I am anti-gun in that I think the cops shouldn't have guns. Cops should have knives. Yeah. I think that would make it much more interesting. Or just throwing knives? No, just knives. Like, so it's like all right, stop. Like, and they just all right. No, just I think in shoot. India, yeah. no, the cops in India have the right idea where they have those big sticks. Yeah. Mm. I think the yeah. Sikhs get a blade. The Sikhs get yes. a blade. Yes, yeah. of course. Even in Queensland, the last free state primary schools, the sick kids are allowed to carry their blade on them. I think we'd be a lot better behaved if if the cops had sticks. I mean, like the cops never going to shoot you unless don't you, they already have sticks? Un- <laughs> unless you go <laughs> mad. No, but, no, but the cops have a taser and a gun. So if you go the mad, sticks third on the list. Yeah, they're yeah. going to shoot you. But if the stick was the first on the list, yeah. the cops would use it way more. Yeah, it's mm. like. I just caught you riding a line bike with no helmet. You're not going to get a fine, but I'm going to whack you across the back with this two-inch dowel across your back like that. Airplane (laughs) spun. Literally (laughs) yesterday, I saw like a bloke, I think it was like a food delivery guy or something on a chook chaser, like motorbike, and he had a second person behind him with a line bike scooter helmet. (laughs) <laughs> on the back of like a motorbike, like that's not legal. I saw. If that. I was a cop, I'd whack him with you my bamboo stick. You get the stick, you get the stick, The bow staff. <laughs> I saw them leave from where they were. I saw that. You saw that same day. duo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the famous. I mean, it was notable. <laughs> uh, we should also mention there's another person in this room right now, J.R. Hennessy. Hello, storied journalist. Sure. Early on the metaverse, I remember Spanion. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, I yeah. went on. I went on Spanion's podcast to yeah. explain the metaverse to him. Yeah, that I think you, I think you picked sen- up a few sen- key points. Sensational <laughs> stuff before the Hood Tour era. That's right. Yeah. Uh, well before he uh, looked at the metaverse and said, "I prefer the Hood." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for that. We're going to Dan and <laughs> <laughs> Um Anyway, thanks for joining us. You guys do the Down Round podcast. Which, um, if I were to summarise it, is um, a podcast with two people who spent a lot of time thinking about the type of things that you only ever hear about in passing. Okay. Yes. Oh, High price. That's yeah. one I way. I thought you were about to say thinking a lot about computers. So that's actually, <laughs> that's way better. <laughs> well, no, I know what you mean by like things that people think about in passing. Like, so you may be talking about like, oh yeah, you know, how does Google make money yeah. or whatever. But... I like to think of the things we talk about are like basically products and, and businesses that people do literally use every single day and then don't really think about. Like the things controlling your life. All right, number one, what's the most? What has the most control over me right now? I mean, it's social media. Let's okay. let's. If you want the honest answer, it's. Yeah. Um, I, was it, to, I was about to say Carlton United Breweries, yes, but yeah. <laughs> well, that is a they got a quite a spread. It's, it's, <laughs> it's algorithms that are kind of brewed up in. Uh, vast server labs in China probably okay, if, yep. depending on your usage of TikTok <laughs> or as like a Gen X atheist would say the online tribalism <laughs> yep yeah Yep. Yeah. Is yeah. That, is that real? Am I am I slowly being pilled <laughs> some way or another? We haven't really spent a lot of time talking about online tribalism, have we? It's a little bit outside of it's our con- remit. No. It's contentious, and we're both we're both kind of immune to it, so <laughs> yeah. it's not something that we think about yeah. a lot. I don't know what they're doing in those places because some of the stuff I've been watching now on these reels that you know that you just kind of mindlessly get caught in. Mm. 
a loop just watching. There's things from what, like, I'm watching light aircraft land in the jungles of Colombia. Sounds good. I'm sounds watching good, yeah. people get run over and killed by trains. I'm oh, watching, yeah, you absolutely. Know, just, That's big like, on X. It's just, it's un- <laughs> like, where do they think this stuff up? And <laughs> yeah. why is it allowed? Like, f- <laughs> fatal industrial accidents on the subcontinent, I think, is like 85% of all content yeah. globally right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, and, it's yeah. just desensitized. Like, like, I can watch that as I'm eating and then just be like, uh, next. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, a Porsche speeding down an autobahn, next. Someone getting crushed by a forklift. <laughs> I mean, it's just in one ear and out the other. Well, the algorithms are targeting you, thinking that you're going to be the most engaged with that kind of stuff. So what does that say? What does it say about you, mate? What does exactly. it, say about you? it means you've, you've, it says you've I, either looked I, for this or I've been broken. For this. You've dwelled, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've dwelled on this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, the algorithm knows that I always wait until there's a crush event. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Just keep watching and watching and watching and then, oh, yep, car has rolled over onto this guy who was riding a moped. And then there's some Next. guy in the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party has gotten that as a report. Yeah. And he's going, like, like, all right, cool. If we need to get this guy over. <laughs> he can never come to Hong Kong <laughs> again. I want to talk about things that we've heard in passing. So much shit came up in the pandemic that we thought was going to be around forever. Yep. You're not trying to monetize this podcast, right? No, no, no. no. We, uh, we, AstraZeneca. <laughs> some, yeah, cool. we, we don't so, even film them. I mean, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's a bridge too far. But I want to talk about, you know, when we were all looking for an escape during the pandemic, there were a few things that everyone enjoyed, like, hey, house party app, that's crazy for three weeks. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know, exercise came back, bakery shit came back, people making sourdough and all that. I mean, there was so many apps, and we spent a lot of time talking about this, that were huge and they were going to be the future of entertainment and content during the the pandemic that – just is a bit. I mean, exercise, obviously, Peloton's a big one. Like, yeah. that was going to be the future of exercise. Gyms were out of business. Like, gym stocks had crashed because it was like, no one's ever going to go to a gym yeah. again. They're all going to stay at home on their Peloton, and Peloton's going to create a dating app, and it's going to create this social community. And imagine yeah. that. It's just all these hot people on a dating app, all with, like, the same, who can talk about, like, yeah. their online psychosocial relationship mm. with, like, an e-trainer and whatnot. <laughs> and, like, the, the firm ass gang. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, That's what they were saying. And then Big dies in the first episode of the Sex and the City reboot, has a heart attack on a Peloton. Is that what killed it? That's 100% what killed it. (laughs) They went through. Check their stock price. It's not looking good. (laughs) They're big. Yeah, I mean, and as you say, well, Clubhouse was the big one, the big social app. Because remember, this this just kind of came and went. I don't know if this came across you, the listener's radar, or not. Um, But Clubhouse is another classic pandemic style. So the idea was... You had this app that you opened. It was like a social network, but for voice only. Yeah. You know, you open it up, you join a room, and it's just people chatting. This was worth billions and billions of dollars. Yeah. And this is going to be the way that we communicate and we interact with kind of social media and entertainment from here on is that we're going to open up this app on our phone and just like listen to random people talk. Yeah. This is worth billions of dollars. And then like- Did within- anyone cash in? Did they cash in? I don't, cash they out? Didn't, they didn't have an opportunity to cash out, I think, right. because I it's- think people very quickly realized that- I don't want to open an app and just hear someone ranting on yeah. raving about how to create a personal brand. Yeah, You're right. Like the, the pandemic caused a period where everyone was like all these social behaviors and all the way, like the way the world works is about to like change dramatically. And it did change dramatically. Yeah. As everyone remembers, everyone was stuck at home. Whatever you were doing, you were playing PlayStation. Destroying the CFMEU office in Victoria. <laughs> you know, like in certain circumstances, that might have been going on. Uh, like, you know, you, you were playing poker with people on Zoom or whatever. Yeah. Your work life changed dramatically. So everyone was like, all right, this is how the world is going to be from now on. And then it turned out, once the pandemic was over, that actually most things didn't change. Yeah. And everyone kind of wanted to get back back to it. Yeah. And that created like a massive destruction of value. As all these brands that popped up, Peloton, whatever. Be so, real, remember that? Be real. Thing? Be real. I mean, you know, that was that was crazy. That was a bunch of French people saying you just wanted to look at everyone's work from home setups once yeah. a day. <laughs> that was never that was never gonna work. Like minimalism is not coming back right now. We need as much content as possible. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, yeah, as well as a bunch of companies that came up because they were like, you know the thing, people hate spending time looking at their phone. What if we created an app that stopped you from looking at your phone? What happens if we created an entire device? And it's like People actually kind of like looking at their phone. Yeah. It's one of the sickest things you can do in yeah, 2024. It's going to be hard to find yeah. in the app store. <laughs> yeah. like I've had a drone fly over my house a number of times. And yeah. That's one thing I'm I'm anti-drone. I'm just putting it out there. I think that they should be banned. Yeah. I don't like them. They're uncomfortable. I don't... Like the feeling of having a drone yeah. just fly over your house, pause. I mean, un- 
I can't imagine what it'd be like for like a Yemeni or someone. Or, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, Somebody, it's a bit worse. Someone who, who sees a drone, then he's a whistle. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I've never experienced it's just bad that. bad vibes. But, like, West, e- but even ignoring that for a moment, just like having a drone just hover over your house, yeah. that's fucked up. Like, we got to get rid of them. You folks. can't even, you can't even hit them with a laser pointer like you can do with airplanes you don't <laughs> want above your house. I've heard people just buy a cheap drone and kamikaze it. That's good. That's a good strategy. Yeah. So you just got to keep a whole like, it's it's drones all the way down because like that's the whole thing, right? With, yeah, you're like, introducing more drones into the drone economy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I wanted because I was looking up jamming devices on the internet, <laughs> and like I know I'm already on some lists, but you know, uh, and I was like, if you knock out someone's drone using a jamming device that above you, your land, like in your airspace, yeah, and the cops <laughs> come round, who's getting in more trouble, like the drone owner or me? Yeah. The cops, the, cops. <laughs> the cops aren't coming around The cops aren't coming around for that. <laughs> for a drone dispute? <laughs> Out of their jurisdiction. I mean, I wouldn't call them. I'm That's more an Air Force cops. issue, I think, mate. <laughs> They're not coming around for drone on drone violence. That like, yeah. Drone on drone violence are like, we've got hard solo to worry about. We're not coming around over a drone dispute. But if you're firing a gun at it, uh, we'll probably knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be open slathered on drones. Yeah, yes. I'm calling it. That is, and it's a, that's a worthy thing to worry about because it's like we all talk about privacy and all this kind of shit that a lot of the time we think about for five seconds and then don't worry about it again. But mm. as for like that real kind of geographic privacy, mm. that is something you can see being invaded. Well, I mean, you know, on the one hand, you have all your data is being slurped up by Facebook, and yeah. you know, it's being sold to data brokers. I mean, maybe not, but you know, that's that's abstract, that's difficult. Well, to, we've already given up on that. It's like we've, we've given up. We all just know in the back of our minds every single thing we do is being tracked. You got to explain yeah. a bit. That, what's the difference when there's like a flying machine that's humming mm. that may be driven by a pedo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. it's a it's a much realer issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I genuinely think look, I think drones are obviously as they get cheaper are going to be more common, but I do not believe in a future where there's like a million drones over our heads, like delivering parcels, this, that, no. and the other. Outside of all of the infrastructure issues, I just don't think people will put up with it. I no. think that we fundamentally, like, because we talk about this a lot on Down Round, like, you know, the human mind was formed with someone waking up and looking outside yep. a cave and seeing a mountain, you know? Yep. I, and that brain, it doesn't like something above it making noise. It just doesn't. <laughs> no. it, it doesn't. Well, it's, it's already happened with, I guess this comes down to the councils, right? It's already happened with the Lime scooters and Lime bikes. If you look at early days of uh, Lime bikes, remember Bondi was just full of them before oh, they had yeah, the engine yeah. on them because people would ride it down the bottom and couldn't be fucked taking it yeah, up the hill. Yeah. And now with these Lime scooters in cities like Brisbane and Melbourne and um, Darwin, when you get into an uncomfortable position, uh, like a hill that your motor's not going to take you up, you, people just leave it there. And eventually what happens is, particularly in nice suburbs, locals complain, 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 complain. They don't know who to complain to, I guess. And then eventually what happens is this becomes a no-go zone. Yeah. So that's you can't take the you get ride fined, share yeah. ride. Well, yeah, you get fined for parking one there. You get, mm. but you can't even motorise it in there. Mm. So I think there's that's what, where it's going to end up, whereas in maybe drone, I don't know. Drone, it'll be very hard to monitor someone's drone where it can and can't go. But Like, you can't fly a drone into an airport. Like, there must be some sort of jammer. There is a jammer. No, mate, you can't fly a drone at Marrickville Golf Course. Because without, of its flight path? Yeah, because it's okay. within the zone. Yeah, and i got a mate who, he didn't, so you get a warning flashing up on your, um, like, whatever the, your controller device is. And I have a mate uh, out at, um, where, are all, what, where are all the quokkas? In WA, what's uh, that? Rotnest. 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 Yeah, he was he was out spearfishing off the coast of Rotnest, and he had his drone up there, and he was getting the warnings. We're like, "This is a military area. Like, take the drone down now." And he's like, "Whatever, <laughs> take." What are you gonna do, military? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, <laughs> look at me go. Like, look at this. Look at this beautiful like uh, like portrait of the sun setting or whatever. And you know, gave him another warning, and then bang, four thousand dollar drone just Straight collapsed into the, into the water. Oh, they jammed him. It just jammed it. Really? I, I don't think. I think it's even like a, an individual decided to jam it. I think that it's just yeah. a computerized thing. I think you're right. The human brain's not going to allow the um, you know the attack of the drones. But there are things that have come and gone in that time where we were promised by men on cocaine that this is the future, <laughs> and NFT is what comes to mind. Where has it gone? Where where did it really get to realistically? Like, uh, we could talk about GameStop. We've seen the movie. We've, you know. we've all seen the film. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the NFT thing. <laughs> the NFT, it was sensationally ridiculous. It was reinventing the wheel of the most basic kind of example I can remember. Uh, 
it, thinking back, we've said this before, like it's hard to remember. Like they were everywhere, you know. <laughs> What, Jimmy Kimmel and Paris Hilton and, like, during the NFL and whatnot, you were told, like, oh, yeah, here are some images that you can buy for 50 grand that is going to make – it's going to triple, like, this this monkey thing. Like, it, it's hard to kind of remember that there was a period there of six months where you just – your grandmother would Ask be talking about, about NFTs, <laughs> about these, like, monkey pictures and whatnot. You couldn't escape it. And that's now just gone. Yeah, they like, completely like, evaporated. Like, that is weird, right? Like, did that Is it really gone? As or are there believers telling you that it's coming back? Oh, the right? believe, I mean, there's believers for everything, right? Yeah. There are definitely some, like, you know, revanche types sitting around on Reddit or whatever and being like, you know, my pudgy penguin. Yeah. You know, we're, we're in a dark period right now. But it's he's a coming, winter. He's yeah. coming back. <laughs> um, We've spoken about this on Down Round, how, like, fundamentally the technology is interesting when it comes to N- uh, NFTs. And, and we've... We're speaking about it with a VC we had on recently. This is the kind of guest we have on um, on Down Round. Um, about how, like, when you first heard about me, like, okay, this is kind of interesting. Like, you could have this kind of token that shows that you own, say, a part of a real picture. Yeah. A real, you know, it shows that you have proof of ownership of some tangible thing. Then all of a sudden, though, it's like, you know, you hear people talking about NFTs and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that interesting thing, like piece of technology. And they're like, no, no, I mean like this fucked up lion. <laughs> you know, like with yeah. smoking wearing weed. Beanie, yeah. <laughs> we're wearing a beanie and smoking weed. And it's like, you know. Okay, well, like, it's what? got the rare gold tooth. Yeah. Yeah. It's, got the, it's got the weird hat and it's got, you know, and this is worth $150,000. <laughs> and then when someone says, why is the picture worth $150,000? No, 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 no. This also gives me membership into a club <laughs> of other guys who think this is cool. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and, like, we should tell, like, the latest, though, on Here these guys think is cool. Like, obviously, Bored Apes were the big one. Like, yeah. the Bored Ape Yup Club was the big one. <laughs> and recently, they had... They had their gathering. They had the gathering. They're still if doing you it. had a Bored Ape, you, you got access to the gathering. And, like, what was the outcome of that yeah. gathering? So, basically, the big story that came out of this, and this was, this was the first <laughs> NFT story anyone had heard in a while. They threw this big rager in Hong Kong or Singapore. Yeah, this was, like, what, two months ago. Anyway, and then all these guys were posting online after being there. They're, like, sick party guys. I actually woke up this morning and can't see. Like, I, I, I literally, <laughs> I've opened my eyes and I, all I can see is blackness. And it turned out all the lamps they had used for the party were high-intensity UV lamps. Yeah, they, weren't, they, were, they were trying to get, like, the UV lamps so that, you know, if you're wearing, like, white, it kind of looked oh, blue. Yeah. Blue and glowed, but they used like hospital grade <laughs> <laughs> and had just fried the eyes. So, so the so the the answer to your question of what happened to NFTs are they still blind? No, I think they're they okay. Oh. Over time, apparently, your sight does come back, but there is some of them have permanently got damaged retinas, yes. <laughs> Uh, and they have obviously a much higher propensity to get cancer. They were trying to do like a fucking <laughs> sick DMX yeah. video clip, kind of like <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Uh, like inverted colors, blue light shit. Yeah, I mean, but like the, <laughs> at the end of the day, it was the same thing. Pandemic, people had some extra money burning a hole in their pocket. Maybe yeah. they were getting pandemic payments, or generally you just didn't have anything to spend it on because you were yeah. sitting around at home. <laughs> you got to put it somewhere. Your regular investments aren't working. I'm going to buy this fucking monkey picture, and this hasn't really played out in the long term. <laughs> Funnily enough. <laughs> When, like, you, when your mate has never thought about money in his entire life <laughs> says to you, you need to buy this monkey picture, it wasn't actually a good investment. I'm sorry. <laughs> I still, like, I, I, part of me it was, it had so much hype behind it and so much, like, um, overrated expertise around it, or, in fact, uh, overinflated expertise. I honestly thought it was still going, but you kind of tell me no, I mean, the, the it, last still thing going. we heard it's is a bunch of guys went blind. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, <laughs> I mean, there's that. There's still people buying and trading them. It's not the same valuation they were, and no one is making the promise that this is the future of the economy. Yeah, It's just a bunch which, of guys have a weird hobby. Which we yeah. remember when they were. When, when they were. Uh, yeah, this was like, forget money, that cash thing, like banks? <laughs> well, you're putting money in a bank. <laughs> what do you do? Like, why don't you have several hundred cartoons that you can, <laughs> that you can <laughs> use to buy things. It'll only cost you like 40 bucks a transaction. Like, so and I... by the way, you're going to get scammed immediately and have them drained. <laughs> like, well, and there's what? nothing you can do about it. Right, so that's money. What can I spend it on? Well, I've got a monkey. You've got an ape. You know, you've got a lion. You've got a lizard. We can make something work here, folks. <laughs> Oh, you know, bless. there was one person who gave who gave it a go and went public with how bad it went. That was... Jerry Harvey. And that's <laughs> one thing I can respect him for. He said he started to do some day trading, mm. started to invest in some crypto, started to do this and that. He lost $8 million in one day and he thought, 
you, you know what the best thing is for me right now? I'm going to tell the AFR. <laughs> so <laughs> they're going to write this puff piece on me that makes it look like I'm, you know, you know, I, I'm in the I'm same with boat. It. I'm happy. Yeah, 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 my investments have gone down too. And it just came off and being like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, it's like, you're all, you, you're worth a tidy bee. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking put your slippers on and go into the yeah. next Stick room. Stick to your computer monitors yeah. and washing it's machines like, or whatever it is you do. Yeah. 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 And also, like, pay back the job keeper that you obviously just spent on <laughs> cartoons. <laughs> yeah. Now, is there a little bit of that kind of flash in the pan aspect with AI? Like, I know people are still using it daily. People who weren't using it six months ago, a lot of people are still using it daily. Yep. But the the kind of predictions that we had, w- would, was there some sort of regulation that's reined it in a little bit or at least reined it in from vision a little bit? Oh, you mean the porno stuff? Well, well I mean, that's, <laughs> no, that's, that's the most recent thing. But the idea of, like, films and fucking songs, yeah, like, yeah, everything's yeah. It's going still, to be. I think, like, I, I, AI, we both agree, is different to crypto. Like, yeah. there's, there's a there there. And anyone yeah. who's sat in front of using, you know, ChatGPT or whatever obviously knows, okay, something's going on here. Something yeah. here is, is pretty cool and it's probably going to disrupt industries and change the, change the way the world works. But there's still a huge amount of froth. Yeah. going on mm-hmm. and, like, yeah. and funnily enough by the same people there are so many people who are like crypto heads <laughs> who have just made the transition to doing weird scams with AI now there's a fuck load of that yeah, I, like, I think you could say something about like, there is this kind of fundamental thing especially I think within like the male millennial head probably extends to Gen Z as well and I mean everyone in general like a lot of people right now feel kind of alienated and powerless right yeah. they, they kind of don't love where they're at to get real for a minute and so they just want to They just want fundamental change. And like crypto kind of offered that. It's like we're changing everything. Banking, all that shit that like all that complex shit you don't fully understand and And like rewarding you. And then for you, like we get rid of all of that. We've got this new paradigm and that new paradigm is going to make people like me and us who understand it and getting in early friggin' rich. And then like AI comes along and it it is super promising and it is definitely going to change things. And it will change like images and videos in the long term. But there's this propensity from yeah, certain people to just immediately be like, this is a paradigm shift and in five years, you, none of you are going to have a job. Yeah. Like if you don't understand it, like you're about to be made friggin' unemployed and I'm going to benefit because I'm kind of in the know. And I don't I'm know, kind of a smart kind of, guy. I don't yeah. know about you, but I'm kind of a smart yeah, yeah. guy. Yeah, this like apocalyptic <laughs> kind of thinking where like you think that you're doing something and part of something great because you're in a bunch of discords kind of yeah. like <laughs> prophesizing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But no, but AI like... Are people going to make movies out of AI? I think that one day they will. Yeah. Like yeah. like all of these things, right now, Google's latest AI video thing, it's like a five-second clip that looks like shit. But a year ago, it was an image that looked like shit. Now we've got images that look pretty good, and all of a sudden we've got five-second videos. Like you just got to kind of look forward to five, ten years. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, the thing that we come back to a lot is... Uh, yeah, I mean, ChatGPT can write you an article. It can write you a satire article. Yeah. It just won't be that good. They're yeah. very dark some of them <laughs> yeah. and, and, but, and with the right prodding and poking and like editorializing you can probably get something good out of it as long as you have good taste though right yeah, yeah. like a, someone who isn't funny mm. I mean we see it happen with Elon Musk and Grok be like look at the funny joke that my AI thing came out with and it's dog shit because yeah. he doesn't know what a funny joke yeah, is yeah, yeah. no well see for example you know on April Fool's Day the Batuta Advocate does do some humor articles uh, just for a local audience. It's disrespectful, don't you think? No, well, see, last year we asked we asked them to come up with one, and it was just the stuff it came up with was just quite chauvinistic. Well, it was just very chauvinistic <laughs> and dark, and that, just you guys wouldn't like just not for, like just not, not fit for print. Not not, not, not yeah, very pithy, anything, but no. like things like 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 this computers making lewd jokes about certain conservative politicians being HIV positive <laughs> and like people like engaging in like grotesque public sex acts and stuff like that it's like no, it's, like it, is that what that computer thinks and you're like well this, we published like, it but you know it's it's like, like, is that what it thinks of me <laughs> well it's obviously been looking at my at my algorithm on on Instagram as well if it's like you, you, you know Scotty from marketing dies in forklift accident <laughs> Now we're cooking. <laughs> now we're cooking in <laughs> India. Yeah. In Rajasthan. Yeah. So, yeah. Print said, it. <laughs> it needs an editor. Yeah. It needs yeah. an editor of the best. And there's no formula for the human spirit. 
Oh, no, Sorry, tr- tr- truly not. I mean, I don't know. No. Check back in 10 years, maybe there will be. But for now, <laughs> that's what we've got. So now you're, you're telling me it's pr- pretty much being used exclusively by real estate agents who will, who will like... Can you write me a pithy description for a mm. yeah. two-bedroom... Cease uh, council flat. <laughs> I think that's the thing. Like, if you're talking about disruption for jobs and shit like that, they're the people who I think probably feeling it right now. If you're like an entry-level copywriter or, yeah, you're the guy that sits down and writes the descriptions on domain.com. Yeah. You're probably probably getting severely disrupted right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and like good. if you're an SEO farm from like the Philippines or some country that has English as one of their national languages, but like the salaries are very low, yeah. um, the hourly wage, those people who were previously tasked with churning out 100 articles for yeah. a friggin' recipe website, yeah, they've been replaced by AI. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the people who right now are feeling it for sure. And, and, and as for the people who are feeling disenfranchised, you say millennials particularly, who are looking for some sort of major paradigm shift or major um, disruption, they don't realise it's also going, this technology is going to go the same way as everything else that's fucked them. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, that, that kind of is a down round theme, unfortunately. The fucking never ends. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, like, unfortunately, all this stuff is pretty cool, but, like, everything seems to be getting worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like the post-GFC austerity measures are now very profitable and... Uh, yeah. Uh, Very it, polished. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Ship keeps rolling. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so one way to escape it just quickly is is up in seeing these new goggles from Apple. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, what do you make of them? Raf thinks they're very cool. I think uh, they're cool. Like not even putting the technology aside, he just kind of wants to wear them as sort of a, a fashion statement. Well, I didn't say that. But okay. sure, I'll be the one. I'll be the first to do it. I'll be the first one to, to walk down George Street. <laughs> well, I mean, like, the, the, the thing with that is, and this is something... Looking at... <laughs> Porgs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was a, like, there was a legend who got, who just got arrested um, driving his Tesla in autopilot with like Vision Pro on, like goggles on. Yeah, that's and the, just immediately, whoo! Yeah. That's, that's, that's the future. Now, this, this is a common theme we talk about a lot, which is that for like. You can't drive a car. You just don't, you don't need to look out the window anymore, brother. Just throw these things on. <laughs> For years, people have been trying to figure out like what's what comes after the iPhone, like yeah. what comes after the smartphone. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty you know a rectangle of black glass that shows you cool stuff. Yeah, pretty hard to beat. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but you know, it's slowing down. People don't buy them as often as they used to. Mm. What's next? And VR. Oh, this is just an Apple decision. Like, it's a, well, well, like the phone, no, right? So it's like, what, what's next after the phone? People, like, the phone isn't making Apple as much money as it used to. We yeah. kind of, realistically, has the phone changed that much in no. 10 years? No. It's, no. it's, it's fundamentally the what's same. The and the yeah. EU won't let them make ones that break easy anymore. <laughs> 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 what's the difference between an iPhone 13 and, and 15 or whatever? Not, yeah. not very much. No. They've kind of perfected the it. Charging yeah. Yeah, yeah, the exactly. charging port. Yeah, exactly. But it's, and it's yeah. showing, though, in their so, revenue, right? People are buying less phones. They're not upgrading as quickly as they Yeah, right. So you're saying they've reached peak phone. Yeah. But we've reached peak phone. And it's not just Apple. Like, you know, Samsung, they try to do it, but like, all right, we've got a phone, but now it folds in half or it's, it's shaped like a circle. tried that so many whatever, times. Whatever the fuck they're doing. We've tried yeah. that yeah, so yeah, many yeah, times yeah. since the 2000s. And the, the VR, fold. VR's the big one. The, yeah. the people think it's going right. to be this. That's why yeah. Apple's pulled the trigger on it. Right. It's the next device. Probably, I mean. Look, I, so I think fundamentally, if you were to say, what is the best way full stop to consume content, mm. and, like, and you, you're starting from scratch, you wouldn't say, a tiny little rectangle no. that only takes up a tiny bit of your field of vision, no. but like mm-hmm. your dopamine receptors are going to kind of black out like yeah. horse blinkers the rest of the world <laughs> and you're kind of going to be consumed by it. Like you would say, well, A, live sports, for example, yeah. you know, is kind of pretty cool, but, you know, something that takes up much more of your field of view. Yeah. So like from a fundamental level, something like VR does make sense. Yeah. I do think at some stage when it's a lot better, and normalized, we probably will be using something like that more. Mixed I mean, reality. Mi- yeah, mixed reality. Is there any reason to buy one right now other than as a curiosity? I don't think so. From yeah. all accounts, the Apple Vision Pro, there you definitely get some wow moments out of using it, but it's, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. The battery runs out. There's heaps of things you can't do. Every company in the world is really mad at Apple because Apple are known fuckwits whenever they deal with any other company because they've had the power for so long. So yeah. you can't even watch Netflix on it properly. You have to do it via the browser, yeah, yeah, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Um, it costs five grand Australian. Yeah, um, yeah. You can't even buy one in Australia. There's heaps of questions about like if you 
wear glasses, how well that integrates and, and doesn't. YouTube's boycotting it. Yeah, YouTube's boycotting it. Facebook's boycotting it because they're just like, mm, you guys have been absolute fuckwits to deal with for the last 10 years and screw us on all of our apps and money and now you want us to help you with your new cool yeah. product? Yeah. Like, absolutely not. Yeah. But, you know, I do think that there's, in the future... I mean, sport. Yeah. Like watching sports sounds pretty cool on it, to be honest. On <laughs> first impressions, though, I thought you know, coupled with like forty milligrams of diazepam, mm-hmm. having that on an aeroplane would oh, just yeah. be ideal. I, all the positive reviews I've seen come through are people who are like, I was sitting on a, on a, a transatlantic flight, <laughs> and I had a cinema size screen watching Ted Lasso, <laughs> and it was the best thing I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. But the, with the worrying trend being <laughs> better op- than being op- op- asleep op- on drugs. <laughs> 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 that's hard to be. That's very hard to be. <laughs> but like, I mean, like one of the few communal moments people have left right is you and your significant other lying in bed watching a laptop, the same thing together. If you're even doing that, rather mm. than watching phones with like headphones in, yeah. and this is just like once again just making people want like, more and more and more just into the individual yeah. alone and there's yeah. a big there's a big social shift has to come like it, it is phenomenally antisocial. well that's what yeah. I was going to ask is like I won't actually say the name drop because it's irrelevant but it was 2018 and I was sitting next to a musician at a concert a musician that went on to be a big name from um, South Sydney housing areas uh, housing commission uh, mm-hmm. yeah, anyway the kid Leroy <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a hip hop concert of which he was not interested in because it was Wu Tang Clan. I just happened to be sitting next to him, and it was 2017. So he's like, you know, he's like 14. Hey. And, he, and but we'd already we'd already like Snapchat was long gone by then, right? Everyone had figured out Snapchat was a bit smutty and maybe just for pedophiles using it for grooming and drug dealers. And I drug mean, dealers. Kids love it for like. It's and the, and he was still using it then. Yeah. And I, mean, I remember thinking, and I asked him. He said, "I'm not on anything." I'm not on any of these social media apps outside of this one, which obviously, you know, he's, he's had to build a profile mm-hmm. elsewhere yeah. on different channels. And I remember seeing it then, that felt like a cool Gen Z Luddite shift, like snubbing all this shit we're on, all their mums are on, mm-hmm. all this. Is there any of that? Are there people walking out there around there and just not using a smartphone? I don't think so. I yeah. think that I think the Gen Z stuff is overblown because yeah. you know they they all have like they did the be real thing for a bit yeah. as we talked about like they did uh, they they had that app that got really popular with young young people where like you would all take a photo at a party and then you couldn't see the photos until the party was over and they, yeah. like, they have all these different things which try to say like you know we need to be cool and sort of uh, spontaneous and not get locked into our phones. Mm. But it's all fucking technology yeah. anyway. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. just new apps and shit. Yeah, yeah. Even your thing where he's like, I'm not on any platform, but I am using Snapchat constantly. Yeah. Yeah. That's just like, I think we're, we're, we're stuck on this fucking train. Well, I just, you know? I, I viewed that as rather a Luddite kind of, it, it kind, it kind of shift because he, he, he was, when we were that age, we were uploading 200 photographs of the house party the night before totally. with separate captions. And tagging every single person. Yeah, yeah. No, like you, <laughs> from our Sony power shot. It is kind of, there is kind of like a lot of thing that they like to at least project yeah. that they're a little bit disconnected from. I don't mm. know. No, I mean, yeah, but the, the latest, literally like a few days ago, uh, like 82% of uh, people between the ages of 18 and 25 in the United States use Instagram once a day. You know, like yeah. the, the kids are online for yeah. sure. And like even if, I mean, they, they definitely use it differently and they definitely, you know, are in communities like Discord and you know, frigging Roblox and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, in these kind of quote unquote metaverse worlds and mm. definitely live way more of their life and have their community online. Like, you know, I was hearing the other day about, you know, it was a snow day in America and, yeah. and previously a snow day meant, go, you know, going out on your friggin' toboggans or whatever. I don't know. I've never had a snow You've day in my that goddamn up. life. <laughs> <laughs> but S- I, Snowball fight. But, yeah, yeah. but, you know, apparently just like the usage obviously of like Instagram and everything yeah. just skyrocketed yeah. every snow day because kids just stay at home DMing the same people they go to school with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know, like, I think the kids are more online than, than ever. They just, in fact, it's just so normalised. Oh, uh, the kids are all right. Speaking of normalisation, that was something that we've talked about, like, you know, in the same, Tinder was normalised for our generation to a certain mm. extent. It, mm. it used to be seen, like, online dating was a weird, <laughs> smutty thing for perverts, right? Like, it was yeah, yeah. only Adult a pervert. Friend finder. Yeah. 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 <laughs> only you a mean per- to say you found your girlfriend at a public toilet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what do you mean? Exactly. Like, or who would, why would you meet up with a stranger that you've met online? That's psycho behaviour. But, like, the same thing will probably be true of, like, 
people having their weird AI online girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. right now, it's just like that's a perverted thing to do. And you, <laughs> like, we yeah. probably you probably should be on some watch list. But like, in yeah, in, it's hard. To, like in five years, you can imagine them being like, well, you know, fifteen percent of the male population need an AI girlfriend. That's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's so nice to him. <laughs> <laughs> nice about his day. She doesn't right? nag. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a big thing with with one of them. Like replica had these online. You had the AI companion. Um, we've spoken about and. Obviously, like the majority of people were using it, you know, because they were lonely young men, mm-hmm. um, and they decided to turn off sexting, right. and there was a meltdown yeah, on yeah. like the Reddit forums because yeah. people had literally formed these relationships with these AI girlfriends, and then all of a sudden, and where they're you know every night looking forward to kind of being like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing? What are you wearing? Putting on Snoop Dogg or whatever. <laughs> I'm wearing my Pentium dressing gown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, not tonight. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the AI girlfriend has just been like, I've got a headache. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like they felt and, rejected. And they, right? Well, they dealt with it the way people who are already engaging in that kind of stuff deal with it, and which is when got on Reddit. guns and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, they got on Reddit and had a whinge. And, but like you were saying, they reversed that decision. Yeah, they right? reversed it. Yeah, because they, they lost a huge amount of their user base. They, they brought it down because, like, you know, the same reason anything happens, regulation, the EU breathing down their neck. Are you, do, are you using this for pedo stuff? <laughs> it seems pedo adjacent to me, what you're doing. But um, I, I don't know. They, they did. They have brought it back, at least in some capacity. Yeah, it, it was like with OnlyFans, how th- that they were like, all right, no more porn. And then... Yeah. It's like we want to get back to why we started this thing in the first place, which is for people to tip online game players. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. it's like, like it's like it was supposed to be like a, a rival for Twitch. And yeah, like Twitch just and got, Patreon and stuff. It yeah. got absolutely just inundated with pornography. Well, yeah, that was the, the only fans thing. I mean, it's always been a bit dodgy the way they've talked about it. They've always been like, oh, we've got lots of creators. You know, mm. some people do cooking, <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah. what are 99.9995% of your users doing? Yeah. They're jacking off, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so, my, my son is a TV cook. He's on OnlyFans. Mm. It's like, it's like it, it doesn't have the same connotation. <laughs> oh, well, what is he doing on there? Where it's like, if he's on, it's like, he has a Patreon. It's like, okay. nice. There is a community that wants to pay him <laughs> to cook so he doesn't have to go to work. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think know. your teenage Good. son's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the family credit card hooked up. And, uh, yeah, he's got a lovely girlfriend elsewhere in the world. Um, one thing I want to talk about is in these brief moments, and this isn't what you talk about, but today I'm really excited to talk to people who can actually answer these questions about the flash in the pans. Mm-hmm. And in these moments of excitement, heaps of shit often gets done and the brands want to get in first. I remember oh, Be yeah. Real was a funny one, the short-lived social media app. Where I mean, all the, the Metaverse bra- was a great example. Yeah, well, that's what I'm, the Metaverse is what I was going to get to. It's oh, like, like everyone like you know, everyone rushed to get handles on each new app that comes out. It's the new thing. It's the new thing. They rushed yeah. to get the handles. Nike, you know. Um, if, you get Ni- if you got Nike on Instagram, at Nike, you're, you're probably for life. Yeah, you're set for life. <laughs> And now the brands are trying to get in front of everything uh, ahead of even these wise guys at home. But the metaverse was funny. When we first started hearing about it, all of a sudden we're seeing videos of like, you know, what Nike has already done. And they've built a full-blown fucking store and, mm. and, and, and you know, fully interactive, yep. well beyond where anyone has ever gotten to since as a social media construct or just even in entertainment. Are there people there just roaming around making cash on these moments? Like someone's obviously been paid so handsomely. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, the consultants always win. No matter what's going on, there's always someone who's like, I'm the metaverse, uh, I I run a metaverse agency. And if, if, if Nike wants to do an installation where it's like a bunch of weird little 3D guys hanging around in a virtual shoe store, I'm the guy to make it. Yeah, like there's always people making money off stuff like that. Yeah, Yeah. and also like, especially bigger uh, corporations, you know, the marketing department, it's a great excuse to get a bigger budget for yeah. the next quarter, right? It's like, we got to be doing this metaverse stuff. Mm-hmm. Nike's doing it. They've well, already got a shoe store. Well, like, we're yeah. behind. When we, we did an episode on the metaverse and one of you know one of our very few but very impactful uh, investigative journalism episodes yeah. was um, Raf going into – what was it? it was, I can't remember what the platform was. It was one of the big ones that was floating around for a while. Yeah, yeah. And the first thing you saw was like an absolute desert with nobody there except like a Jose Cuervo installation. Yeah, yeah. Where so it was you could go and you could you could um, pick agave or something. Yeah, exactly. There were literally – so I went into – like it was the biggest one at the time. 
I think I bumped into two or three random people who refused to engage when I was like, hey, hey, what's happening? Like, what, what are you up to? And they just like ran away. There might have been bots. I don't know. Or maybe it was something about my uh, my avatar was pretty shit, right? Because I didn't have any NFTs or whatever. So it was like pretty stock avatar. And yeah, there was a huge, uh, God knows how much this tequila company like paid to have this yeah, this activation where you run around plucking agave <laughs> in order to kind of generate, I think, like maybe a Mexican hat or something like that, <laughs> NFT. But yeah, there was not a lot going on. There. And then I went into like the poker. It was like, oh, no, the, but the poker is really popping in there. Like there's go to the poker place. And I went into the poker room and there was about 13 people there and just one guy being interviewed about his NFT art and someone just abusing him for like and not being like based enough or some crap. It was just... And it, was, it was a beautiful view of what the, what the future is going to be. And, and, and a lot of these believers think that this whole decentralized world is so capable of policing itself, uh, which is just... Not, uh, yeah, I've, like, yeah. I mean... <laughs> Look at any group of 20 people, full stop. Like, go on holiday with a group of people and then see what self-governance looks like. I mean, <laughs> this, this all comes down to the fact that, like, brands and companies watched a bunch of kids socialise in Fortnite or whatever, mm. which does happen. You know what I mean? Like, kids have rich social lives playing with friends on Fortnite. It's not mm. that different to, like, playing online games for millennials when we were younger. And being like, that's what life is going to be like. Mm. You're going to work in an office yeah. and do that. You're going to converse with your, your grandparents in there. You're going to have fucked up little avatars. Your grandma is going to be like this big buff yogi bear. You know, <laughs> We're all going to be able to express ourselves purely. And I don't know. I, I feel like it feels like we're a while off the social changes required yeah. for people to accept that kind of shit. The other weird issue with the metaverse is it, it implied, because like everyone was buying land, right, in the metaverse. You had to buy land in like yeah, yeah. cool areas, this virtual land. But it kind of implied that what you would do is you would kind of go to your virtual office or whatever in the metaverse and if you had a poker game or whatever after work, you would like virtually walk out of the office and walk down the street to like your friend's virtual house as opposed to like, why wouldn't you just like it's digital? Why wouldn't you just go like yeah. now I'm in my friend's house? Like, yeah. why do you need this physical space that you're because like? They can't. They haven't figured that bit out. Yeah. <laughs> like, they haven't figured you out. You got to walk. You got to walk yeah, and look at all these fucking Nike ads. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> we got to figure out. There's got to be some outdoor advertising. <laughs> yeah. Like we don't know. That yeah. never really made sense to me. Like yeah. why it has to be like here I go walking down the street. Like also, they do fast I'm, travel in computer games for God's sake. Just buy a bunch of land in Idaho with a bunch of friends. Yeah, and, exactly. You know? <laughs> anyway, what are your predictions for 2024 in terms of brain melting, world shifting? Uh, shit. Well, I think we're going to see a lot more about VR stuff because mm -hmm. we're just talking about like there's lots of we've seen all these like cringe photos and videos of guys out and about yeah. wearing their Vision Pros, <laughs> driving their driving Cyber their cars, trucks, they're, they're, they're sitting in Chinese restaurants wearing it, whatever, and it's very annoying and it's lame. But they are actually doing it and posting it, so it's kind of like I think there's going to be a lot of normal people who see that stuff and go, yep. I can vibe with that. So we're going to hear about that a lot more and the AI stuff. Like I don't think it's going to change the world dramatically, but. We're going to hear about it in just so much. The AI kind of yeah, generator yeah. stuff is just going to become so normal. Yeah. And I think like that's the biggest fundamental shift, I think, between if you like today's date to December 31st this year, I think we'll be totally normalized to the idea that we assume every image is probably fake yeah. of like not our friends. Yeah. But even then, of our friends, we'll start wondering, like, yeah. is this fake? Like, there's two sides of this. There's one, there's a celebrity thing where you just, if you see a photo of Joe Biden, you have to your brain will immediately think it's probably fake at yeah. first and you'll look into it and it may turn out to be real as opposed to the default now, which yeah. is the other way around, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the flip side of that... The boomers aren't going to be doing that. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I mean, like, you know, uh, I have no insight into their minds. You know? <laughs> their alien minds. And then also, though, the subtle integration of AI on the other side, like, of your friends. Like, when you take a photo, when it already happens when you upload to TikTok or whatever, your, you know, your face gets smoothed out. Yeah. That will just become more and more and more. You know, Samsung got in trouble for putting an AI moon in in people in people's photos like it wasn't the moon in the photo they ai'd a little yeah. moon there and people got mad at that but that kind of stuff where yeah. like the photos you take will just have more and more um augmentation like yeah. ai augmentation will become more and more normal and, we, and it'll just be like normalized and polaroids back i guess for the yeah i mean yeah. like they keep saying that it all and i mean there's different ways of how you you know people need to think about now how you would like to keep your memories i know we're all thinking about maybe one day deleting you know, all of these fucking yeah, yeah. clouds and shit we have of 
I don't know. Way more photos we took of ourselves than any generation did before. No, totally. And you're worried about losing them. <laughs> like, like, and they live in a data center in the middle of Arizona. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to yeah. have kids growing up. Like, there used to be a bit of mystery. Like, you'd see an old photo of your dad from yeah. the 70s and be yeah. like, oh, wow, yeah. look. Well, like, look at that cool dude. Yeah. And now yeah. they're just going to see fucking everything. Yeah, just <laughs> a video of your dad just pulling a bomb <laughs> <laughs> when he was like 14. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to come up in a random memory, right? He's <laughs> like, here, here is dad at a golf day in fucking 2018 having some ketamine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I didn't need to see that. Like, yeah, no like one did. Powerful memory, you know? <laughs> well, where can everyone find you? You, uh, you, you, you video and your audio and your... Uh... Well, we're, we're more audio than we are video. We yep. do have the videos up on TikTok. We've had one banger. Yeah, you've got one away. <laughs> we've got one away. <laughs> and that we've retired, basically, from being seen. <laughs> but um, now, down around, it, just podcast audio primarily. Yep. Yeah. Look at right. one of your favourite podcast player. Same as anything else. Down round. Down round. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. us.